In this episode I want to take you with me to one of the most beautiful graffiti spots in my area and I want to tell you all the secrets about 3D shading while painting a nice freestyle. Hello friends and followers and welcome back to a new video. My name is Mo from Germany and today we want to make a little raw video and I will put the camera on my head now and start painting but before that I will show you around so that you get an idea of the amazing graffiti spot. Yay! I would really like to give every single artist credits like I did in the video from the Netherlands but uh, in this case because some of them are, they are doing illegal stuff and some of them yeah some of them they probably don't want to be in a video of mine uh, because I'm not such a real graffiti artist and so on I give my very best to give you as much information as I think is good and if I missed something, please give me uh, any any helpful advice, it's always good. I will write everyone that I missed in the video description. And I just want to say that I, I really deeply enjoy to be at places like this and I just want to show my biggest respect to all the artists. <laughs> Thank you for what you're doing. Such a nice place. Recently I'm just waiting for my local guy for Kiel, but he still did not arrive. So I have some time to show you a little bit around. We are here in Münster. This place is called the Haverkamp. I always feel better if I have somebody with me who has a, who is a local and who knows which are the oldest pieces where is it cool to paint over and uh, who are the guys you better don't paint over? spread some wisdom at this moment always make photos if you paint over somebody else's pieces you never know if this guy has made some good photos if he painted this at night or if somebody disturbed him or if he forgot his camera be so respectful always make photos before you paint over somebody else's artworks oh come on that's passed for you oben yeah. 
Yo, and finally I start with my freestyle first lines. I did not prepare any sketch, but I already knew that I want to paint very, very small because I don't have so much time. I had about two hours left at this moment and I wanted to paint something with this new leaves style. I will show it to you now. I don't know what happened with me the last weeks, but suddenly there is this new natural flowerish style in my head and I want to, I want to work with these leaves in the next weeks and months probably. And uh, this was the first time that I tried to bring this leaf style to the wall. I don't know if it was such a brilliant decision to try something new if I have only three hours to paint, but sometimes I'm just impatient. By going some steps back, I directly noticed that I could perfectly add a double connected extra bar above the O. And the S totally looks weird and this is why I removed all these elements that I wanted to paint first and I made just some tiny adjustments to feel happy with this piece. For the fill-in I decided to go with two different grey tones and two different blue tones and I directly added the drop shadows within the fill-in before I started to paint the outlines. But I still was not happy with the shape of the S and so I decided to paint over the S again and if I see the first lines and the fill-in of the S now, <laughs> I just don't understand why I did this. Okay, but sometimes you make weird decisions. At the end I changed it a third time and after that it looks better than it looks now or it le looks even the same, I would say. And I decided to go with black outlines because I didn't want to make any weird decisions and uh, black and white outlines, they're always a sure shot. You can't make anything wrong with um, colors that are at the ends of the whole color range. And lots of people ask me, what do you do if you paint something wrong? Yeah, and the answer is just, I paint over it with another color. Because you can't make anything wrong, you just can't stop painting too early. And oversee a mistake, because you can paint with every color, <laughs> over every color. So there is no need to be afraid. Back to the double connected extra bar and I do a little bit of slicing at this point to make it more obvious that this double connected extra bar is going behind the O. And after adding this kind of a serif to the S I'm finally done with the basic piece and now I will start doing all the effects. At first I add a little bit of shine on the leaf to make it look a little bit more round and to give the eye more information about this curved shape of the leaf I add these um, roundish rectangular designs and give them a little bit of shadow so that the eye directly sees okay now I understand the shape of this leaf and because of the imaginary light source is above the piece all the surfaces which are facing down get a little bit of shadow and the artist goes some steps back and decides that it was good what he has done. Oh yeah. Now comes the tricky part. Adding shadow <laughs> to black is impossible because black is already the darkest color. So the only option I have to make shadow visible on 
on a black surface is just to paint some light and the extension of the E is making a 45 degrees angle shadow on itself's block. All outlines which are facing upwards or surfaces like this part of, I call it the nose of the E, um, they all get a little bit of blue reflection but this reflection here is just there because I want to make this kink visible uh, within the block. So sometimes I even make reflections, paint reflections, which don't have the reason because of the light source. Some of them are just there to make kinks visible. And yeah, at the end, the eye has to be satisfied. It does not have to be all totally right. It just has to look right. And while painting the E, I noticed that I have way too much white space within the E. And so I added a little bit of black by adding these cracks. The chip above the double connected extra bar gets some extreme reflection because it's on top of the piece and gets the most light on it. And again, here we have such an interesting shadow. The part of the M is making a shadow on this lid underneath the M and it uh, makes a curved 45 degrees angle shadow on the lid, on the block of the lid. This is lit. This is lit. This is lit. At this point I give the leaf of the S a little bit roundness as well and um, shadows always look better if you add a little bit of a lighter color at the outside of the shadow. I noticed this when I was painting in Cologne together with Biatch. Um, this was the first video of this year I think. Yeah, I add here and there a little bit of uh, reflection so that the fill-in looks um, curved. And all outlines which are facing upwards and a little bit to the left side, um, they get a blue reflection. When I was done with the darker blue reflections, I add some highlights with a lighter blue. Like you can see here, it looks beautiful. Always just some tiny dots of a lighter blue within the darker blue reflections. And after going some steps back, I decided, okay, this works good. I don't have to add anything more. Let's start doing some more designs within the fill-in. And I directly start with some white. And I add the YIC crew on the left side and the skill art crew at the right side. And because I'm so goddamn clever, I already took some dark red with me and I used this red to paint a nice drop shadow. And because so many people out there have problems understanding the magical drop shadow, here, here, here is, is a, a quick, quick drop, drop shadow, shadow tutorial. tutorial. Okay, this is our graffiti piece and we already know that the light source is at the upper left corner. So the shadow of our graffiti piece will fall into the same direction. It is easier to understand if you imagine your graffiti piece would be just a flat 
shape. The shadow is just a stupid duplication of the whole shape of the graffiti piece. And look there, suddenly it looks 3D. And the best thing about it is that your brain is so stupid, it does not even notice if the shadow is totally crooked. It always looks right. For the background I prepared a stencil on a frame because um, if I use this cardboard stencil without a frame it is pretty wobbly and I wanted to, to try it out um, so that I can use the stencil without any second person who helps me and I am pretty fast with it. I designed the stencil in a way that it creates one seamless pattern. So all corners create together a flower and there is always a flower in the middle and you won't see the connection points. And the secret about the drop shadow is that always when I paint over the drop shadow, if I, if I paint some pattern over the drop shadow, I just use a darker color. There is no transparent black, there is no magic, it is just a darker color over the darker drop shadow and a lighter color over the regular background. Whoa. Bam! Bam! Look, Look at, at this! this. Yo, now I add some funky designs with That's a very good. flashy color. And to be honest, I should have stopped at this moment, but the problem was, I was just too fast. There was still time left over and I... <laughs> Oh man, now I start to paint. I'm not sure if I painted too many effects and too many reflections and yeah. too, too many weird things, but now I start to get crazy a little bit. I added a pink backlight reflection in the shadows. Yeah, it is kind it is some kind of cool. And I like backlight reflections in general, but why is it pink? <laughs> this makes not no. such a big sense. After that I painted my broken halo as usual, flying over the graffiti piece. And because it is shining in a yellow shine, we have some yellow reflections as well. I added some flying glowing dots. I wrote some props on my piece to Daniel and Simon and added even some more funky effects to it here and there. And a big thanks to Montana Cans for supporting us with the best spray paint on this planet. Yay! I am happy. Yes. I escalated a little bit with the effects. It looks like a very shiny something. You want to see the final result? This, 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 this is, is the, the final, final result! result. <laughs>was my quick Tuesday morning spray and now I will drive to the podcast the Escalier podcast from Daniel and Simon Daniel and Simon they made a super nice interview with me about social media being an artist what it means to work on your own because I 
I never worked as an employee ever my whole life. And uh, yeah, they have a super nice German podcast about entrepreneurship, startups, and I will put it in the video description. I hope that you were a little bit entertained and I hope to see you in the next project. Ciao.